Hey everybody, uh, it's been a while, at least for Diablo 3 video, uh, SPS Diva here, um, been doing a little bit of Final Fantasy for the last about month or two months, uh, really not much stuff going on in the world of Diablo 3, uh, took a little break, uh, due to after all the stuff that kind of happened in Season 3, uh, as I tell everybody, um, I enjoy Diablo and I enjoy playing it, but, um, I kind of got tired of the, uh, season exploits and the, uh, the botting and stuff like that kind of made the spirit of competitive play not that really fun, much fun. Uh, not to mention the um, the fishing for rifts, trying to hit the lottery and get the perfect rift, things of that nature, and all the RNG stuff that just overall doesn't make the game too much fun in the long term. Uh, for the for the short term though, uh, the short term, uh, I find the game is very fun. I have a lot of fun with it, trying all the new items, getting all the different stuff, uh, progressing onwards. Um, so, uh, it looks like for Season 4 and the new PTR that's out, it looks like it's going to be a pretty enjoyable game and new stuff to do. But I think we're just going to end up going back to the same square one or same step of what we've been dealing with already due to the fact that uh, they're implementing some new ideas which are pretty cool. But I can see a long line of uh, development or uh, balancing issues and stuff of that nature. So it's kind of flashing some red lights, and as you can see, if you see at the bottom, I was trying to get on PTR, it's a 9 hour and 39 minute wait. Because uh, they increased the drop rate significantly, and most people hop on the PTR and play the game, or play PTR like it's actually um, a game. They're not testing shit. So I, and it's also weird because you can download the PTR for Diablo without actually owning the game, which is funny, but... Uh, I don't think I'll get on tonight. I don't even know if I'll get on the next couple days. Uh, this is pretty ridiculous. Um, but for the most part, I guess what we can actually do is just talk about my thoughts. And, and I guess this video is a long time coming, but uh, why uh, I think a lot of people lost interest in the game and why people are not messing with it too much. But um, let's just go ahead and take a look at the patch notes. Something pretty much straightforward. And we're just going to go down the list. And we're only going to worry about certain things that pertain to Witch Doctor. So, like I said, a lot of cool things that looks different in the game. Uh, past features of the runes of uh, Sheshiron, which I know is probably a different area or a new area, which is fantastic. Uh, Kanai's Q's and Season Journey. Uh, and then the changes to Witch Doctor. So we're going to go ahead and start with the Kanai's Cube. Um, Kanai's Cube is a new artisan that offers a slew of new recipes to fully customize your items and catalog your legendary powers. Several recipes are, very, uh, are available to players. Immediately upon acquiring the Kanai's cube, um, I do believe I heard some people tell me that you have to do some bounty stuff in order to uh, be able to get certain items and things that you need so you can get the cube completed. I'm not too for sure about that. It's going to be a really interesting um, trying to use the Kanai's cube because I heard like a lot of things that you do is involves doing all a bunch of bounties. And once you leave the game, you pretty much lose your game. But uh, you extract legendary power, destroy an item, and add its legendary power to your catalog of collected powers. So once the power has been extracted, it can be equipped to your character without need to equip the item. Uh, players may have one weapon, one armor, and one jewelry power equipped at a time. Players may only equip powers from the items that their characters can normally equip and use. Debo, what does that mean? Let's say that you have a dagger of darts and you have an SMK. The SMK makes it so that Big Bad Voodoo resets one second uh, off its cooldown for every time your fetish just lands an attack. And it also reduces the, uh, the fetish army casting time for every time that happens as well. You could destroy an SMK, essentially, and get the affix of the uh, legendary power I'm assuming or you can even maybe let's just say you destroy a dagger of darts which basically make it so that when you shoot darts it pierces through everything which also makes it show your fetishes do. You basically could destroy a dagger of darts, equip an SMK, and then basically have the affix set so that on your weapon uh, you will basically be able to equip an SMK and still have the effect of the Dagger of Darks. Uh, so you could have it that way. So you could actually run SMK with the Carnival build, which is currently the top end build for Witch Doctors. Then you also can add an armor affix to whatever legendary uh, item has an armor affix to it. So I'm thinking 
Um, hmm, it really depends. Maybe you could add a Tal Rasha chest and just take the attack speed, but that's a stat. But I guess we'll have to find someone of a decent chest to use. And then also uh, one jewelry power equipped at a time. So basically you could actually get an SMK and then you destroy a dagger of darts, get the power from the dagger of darts, and then also take the necklace and take whatever power you want to get from the necklace. Um, you could basically take, like, uh, I don't know, uh, the one that makes you immune to uh, arcane damage, or maybe one that makes you immune to lightning or poison, and then, you know, you have another one equipped as well, too, and then you can have all these effects running. So up to three legendary fixes that can equip to your character. Um, I don't want to sound like a hater. I don't want to sound crazy. I think it's really cool. In essence, what they actually wanted to do. But the biggest problem with this is this is going to be extremely hard to balance. So, for instance, if they do implement this in the game, you're going to have to set aside some developer time to not only deal with people breaking the fourth wall because they're able to have three legendary affixes equipped to their character uh, from items that they normally use, uh, and plus, who knows what kind of bugs and things that might arouse. So we won't talk about the buggy stuff that could happen, like maybe you uh, equip one thing and do this and do this, and you actually can get a fourth one or extra effect. We won't conclude those in the discussion. We'll just simply talk about it from a matter of balance. Trying to balance everything like around the Kanai's Q with the three affixes is pretty, pretty crazy. I think maybe they should have did one or two. But three affixes... One's necklace, one's weapon, one's chest. So like I said, Carnival with SMK, with the Dagger of Darts, and then you basically have the Dagger of Darts effect power, and you can use the SMK with the Carnival build. So like I said, it's not that I don't want to see it in the game, it's not that I don't hate the idea, I'm just thinking about... The, one of the big problems I see is that sometimes Blizzard likes to include a lot of things that are cool. Right, that you enjoy, whether it be the trials, um, whether it be the ancient items, or what's some other ones? Certain affixes on certain legendary gear, such as the, the immunity necklaces and hellfire amulets and different things like that. Um, there's certain things they add in the game. Well, this is actually a pretty huge thing, just like the legendary gems. The legendary gems needed to be overall you needed to be overhauled hugely, very crazy. And then the funny thing about legendary gems, at the end of the day, you would only end up using certain ones anyway, and really didn't feel like a choice. Plus, there was a lot of kind of crazy combinations and exploits and different things that actually came up with regards to uh, them having the legendary gems in the game. So I guess as long as they're committed to balancing this and being very aggressive with what they're going to do, I'm okay with this. But I always tell people I'm not trying to hate. I'm just saying, look at it from a real standpoint. Uh, look from a real kind of standpoint. You know, there might be some crazy fixes that you need to do to get ahead, uh, get ahead and get crazy. Um, not to mention already, you actually have to get the item and you have to destroy it in order to get that legendary fix to be equipable by your character. So it's like you're gonna have to actually at some point destroy your SMK, destroy your dagger darts, and if people got mad that. You know, they couldn't find a certain item. Well, now you got to find a certain item. Now, at this point, when you're min-maxing, what you'll do is you'll find an SMK. And you also will find a Dagger of Darts. And you'll destroy the Dagger of Darts and keep the SMK. Or in some of the situations, to be flexible, you might end up destroying the SMK. So, we'll have to see how Blizzard's going to do this and how they're going to handle it. But I found this quite interesting. Um, we'll just move on. We'll forge a legendary item. Completely reroll legendary item as it has dropped for the first time. This includes the patterns may improve enchanted by the item note. The reforged items may reroll as either ancient or non-ancient. Uh, this is the, see this is a problem brought upon from the ancient item because now it's going to be interesting because I guess what you're going to do is just keep rerolling a certain legendary over and over and over again until you get an ancient version of it. That's one way to deal with it. I always said that, you know, for at least for weapons, for ancient items, what they should do is just make it so that once you obtain a certain amount of experience or you level with it, it turns the item into ancient. Maybe not as best as a drop ancient, or maybe they should have had ancient items, like, basically, you know, become ancient by using them so much. Like, you kill so many monsters and you harbor so many souls and stuff like that, and, it, and then it becomes that item. They could have done it like that, um... 
40, they level up and stuff like that. But this is going to be pretty interesting. I guess that's a good way to burn through supplies and stuff like that. And you just keep rerolling until you get the ancient version of what you want. So we'll have to wait to see how this is going to be. But I think it's going to be a pretty good... Uh, they should make it really expensive in terms of gold. But this will make it a good... Uh, you know, craft and minerals and crafting and all that kind of stuff. Mats, this will be a really good sink. Because a lot of people are going to have SMKs and dagger darts. And trying to get them to their best... Uh, rules and stuff and they're going to probably spend millions and lots of mats in order to do this so actually from a point of grinding for me like a person that plays a lot like me I think that would be cool because then I can just keep grinding till I get the weapon I want right because I can just keep rerolling but for some other people they might get frustrated because they might go more into despair but I guess at least now you have a chance to reroll an item for an ancient so I guess it's not too bad so I'm pretty much in agreement with this on Blizzard but like I said this is kind of weird because they had to do that because the problem with the ancient item is in some situations the ancient item made a huge difference so they had to figure out a way to make it so that players fairly can get it uh, upgrade rare item rare upgrades the quality of a level 7 rare item to a legendary the item will roll as a randomized legendary that shares the item's equipment style. I think that's a good idea. Helps out people early on when they're trying to get all the gear set up inside of seasons. Outside of all that, I don't really see a big deal about it. That's pretty cool. Makes sense to me. As long as the cost is right and appropriate to converting this yellow rare item to a legendary. I don't see nothing wrong with it. Um, convert set item. Convert set item into a random piece of gear. Same set. So only if you convert a pair of Astro Spawner, you get Astro's Customs. Act. That's cool. I agree with that. How you could basically, uh, you know, if you got one type of legendary item, a, let's say a set item that you wanted the boots, but you got the helm. You can now reroll the helm for a chance for to get the boots. Uh, the only thing I can see this, this will make, like, gearing up for the six-piece sets real trivial because people gear up within two to three days. So this is just going to make it even more crazy. <laughs> Alright, it's going to make it less time to get what you want. So that's going to be interesting. Because it's a, it's, that's a kind of effect that makes it so that, uh, uh, how do you say, you gamble for a dollar for a certain specific item. And then after that, you just keep spamming it or changing it until you get the one you need. It's going to make gearing up even faster, which is okay. But like I said, in terms of the long term or keeping people interested in the game, they're not going to go ahead and do that. Uh... Remove the level requirement, moves the level requirement from an item, allowing it to be equipped by a character at any level. Fantastic idea, I think that's great. Convert gems, converts an item color gem to any other color. Fantastic idea, I think that's great. Convert crafting materials, converts 100 of normal magic or rare crafting onto 100 of another type of legendary, non legend crafting material. I think that's fantastic. Good idea, Blizzard. So, the last three make sense. Um, the one that makes it so they extract legendary power seems a little bit nuts. Uh, and outside of all that, I think that is uh, pretty cool. If you excuse me, I need 30 seconds. I got something in my eye, I need to wash it out. My goodness so much better all right um, so I mean that's pretty much about the biggest thing about the new things going on which is the cube so um, overall I think the cube has potential I'm kind of glad they went back in the day right and they call it some different Kanai's cube which used to be the Haraja cube but I'm glad they went back and took some ideas from Diablo 2 and decided to put it inside the game so I think that's cool. Um, for now, at least, we'll have to wait and see. Blizzard better be on their game with balancing. Otherwise, it's going to kind of... Adding the Kanai's cube is just going to make uh, these next season pretty nuts. Or end up broken if they don't watch it. Or make people hate their classes. Because there's only one type of build you can go because this is the best. Alright, Witch Doctor. The main class that we only really care about. Uh, I won't touch into the many other classes. Oh, well, I won't touch any other classes because, you know, I'm a... My main thing is Witch Doctor. Uh, acid Cloud, Screw, and Quartz Bam, and increase damage to this. Could be a little bit higher. Alright. Skill, uh, Blazing Spiders, or Spiders now return 3 mana per hit, which is weird because they switched it around from Widowmakers, now increases damage from 7% weapon damage. Uh, I think both these can be worked a little bit better. 
Uh, fire bat skill and collider bats. Increase the rate from 8 to 12 yards. Cool. Skill room plague of bats. Final damage increase from 636, 6, 6, uh, 638 to 660% weapon damage. Cool. Skill room vampire bats. Damage change type change from fire to physical. I think these are all acceptable because they have a new item that's going to make it so you get life on hit when you actually go fire bats. So I think it will be okay for fire bats. We'll have to see how good it is, but uh, I think overall that's going to be pretty interesting. Um, I think if you do run that, you might have to, I don't even know if the new item makes it so that you can actually, if you were to run fire bats, you would have to have something that makes it so you don't get knocked back, because uh, you would have to use uh, the two piece, I forgot what it's called, um, there's currently a belt, and well there's a bracer, a certain type of bracer that makes it so you don't get knocked back, because that's the biggest drawback to using fire bats, because if you get knocked back you're kind of out of luck, because you'll stop channeling, so that seems pretty interesting. Skill room, ghost spawn, damage chains from fire to cold, not a big deal there. Hex, super buff, um, extends the caster's range for 25 to 50%, you can actually place the caster where you want it to do, damage is increased from 10% while jinx to uh, hex to 15%. The angry skill chicken is pretty much the same. That's from fizzle to poison. Hedge magic damage type change from fizzle to cold. Fantastic. Jinx, he's a big one. 10 to 30%. Very good. So that's going to probably be a mandatory skill. Hex. Damage type change from fizzle to poison. Which means if you're using an carnival build, that's fantastic because you are using poison, right? So, Plus it hits multiple people because they changed that in the previous patch. Uh, skill to uh, ruin toilet fusionist has been resigned. Every five seconds, the toilet pulls the furthest enemy within 45 yards. Once for 0.5 seconds, it spits them back out, leaving them with the debuff that does 750% weapon damage over five seconds, increases damage taken by 25%. That actually might be pretty high. <laughs> you know, so uh, we'll have to see and test that out. I think it's better than what it used to be. I don't know if it's going to be widely used by everybody. Uh, skill rune on stable form, weapon uh, weapon damage increase from 135 to 500%, I think that's fantastic. Mass confusion, skill rune devol devolution, chance to summon zombie dog increase from 30 to 100%, which is good, but I don't know how much that's going to add to it. Uh, skill rune mass hallucination, weapon damage increase from 195 to 400%, great. Uh, skill rune mass hysteria, maximum number of enemies stun increase from 6 to 10, cooldown resist from 45 to 30 seconds, okay that makes sense. And then the other one that you're really concerned about, the one that increases damage, they didn't touch that one, of course. Uh, Plague of Toad skill rune, Priest and Toad's damage change from poison with a physical, makes sense. Skill rune, Toad affinity, damage type for change from poison to cold, not too many big chances. Whole Harvest, nice buff, getting additional solver stacks will no longer remove all existing stacks, it will instead be added to them. Any new stacks of five or more will replace in the stack with the shortest remaining duration. So I'm assuming it's going to keep going and keep going and keep going, which I think is really fantastic. Overall, I think it's great. Good job. This is the kind of thing uh, it needed to be added. And then also, Soda Waste has been redesigned. Now grabs 5% movement speed per stack. Fantastic. That's going to be good for Jade. It might do a little bit more tweaking, but I think overall that's going to be fantastic. And really good overall. Uh, the Wall of Zombies has been removed. Replaced with a uh, Wall of Death. Raise the Wall of Zombies 28 yard raise from the ground that blocks enemies. Uh, I can't. From initially looking at these things. For wall of zombies i'll be short and sweet straight to the point this looks good but until i can actually test it and see how it does in battle with the set i won't know but it looks like it has like a lot of potential to do a lot of damage and they re tried really hard to rework everything so we'll have to wait and see about that zombie charger explosive beast is 532 to 5 percent weapon damage and increased yardage i don't think it's going to help that much lumbering cold a little bit higher i don't think that's really going to matter uh, skill of zombie braids damage increase from 392 to 400% more weapon damage. They need to make the damage really higher for the spells in order to make us want to use them. I don't think that's going to be too great. Uh, bad medicine damage reduced from 20 to 25. Duration increase from 3 to 5 seconds. That's good. Blood ritual might cost life increase from 10 to 20%. That's all right. Uh, physical tumor has been worked with swamp blend tumor. Grabs from your pets 120 resistance for physical poison, fire, and cold per enemy between 20, uh, 20 yards. That's really strong, and that might have some strong potential as special. Especially, that might actually be pretty good in hot, huge mob density situations. It might help uh, with the uh, Jade build, and also might be pretty good on a, health to, uh, a Hellfire amulet, so we'll have to wait and see how that's going to go, especially with the Kanai's Cued. Uh, spell to two minute manager, regeneration increase from 1 to 3% seconds uh, per second. Fix the issue that presented Replicant of Haunt, Holy Spirit applying the 20% damage uh, taken buff, which is funny because I thought they fixed that before. It fixed the issue where fetish is summoned, but they give it an accounting towards the amounts of haunt for set bonus. Fix an issue that caused each fire bats, hungry bats to do half the damage listed. 
So, interesting changes for the Witch Doctor. And I think that's pretty much about it. I think they have some new legendary season four items. Let's take a look at the Witch Doctor one. Uh, Heron's Prequisition New Mojo. The first enemy that die, uh, deals damage to you reduce that damage 45 to 6% and charm the enemy for every three seconds. That has potential. Because, especially. I don't know, maybe if you did like a one handed jade, I don't know. But the first time an enemy damages you, reduce the damage by 45 to 60%, which I think is pretty strong. We'll have to wait and see how that goes, but I think that's a pretty solid weapon. A lot of testing will let us know whether or how good it is. And outside of all that, I mean, that's pretty much about it. So, um, just so you guys know, I'm going to be doing a lot of Diablo 3, so check back the stream as soon as I can log on and get on. And, uh,. Yep, still waiting nine hours, but hopefully when I can start getting on, I'll be posting a lot of information. Expect the big coverage of all the PTR stuff and all the wrap-up for Witch Doctor class. But anyways, man, um, I'll see you guys in. Uh, if you guys get any open games out there and you want to throw me an invite, please let me know, because I would love to not wait nine hours. So I'll see you guys soon, and uh, be checking out the YouTube channel, and I'll be uploading a lot more videos. Take it easy.